tomorrow the worst. <coughs> anyway, we're back to more lost. Today, I'm going to show you how to run relays for your headlight circuit on an older car. This is a really common modification to do, especially if you're going over to semi seal headlights or H4 bulbs headlights on a car. The demonstration car today is obviously a Mark 1 Civic because I have it and I've already done the modifications. But this system will work on a lot of different cars. So, let's start off with the real basics. How does my headlights work on my car? Well, the original Honda wiring as well as a lot of other early cars work the same way. Basically you have the battery, which sends power down a wire into this here rear fuse, probably in your main fuse box. In case the Civic is down by the driver's side kick panel. Yeah, there's the glass fuses, pretty standard stuff. That runs into your headlight switch. I'm going to put one switch in this, obviously a normal car switch would have one turn headlights on and then another one to flip between dip and high beam. In this case we'll just switch one switch because it's the same idea. From there, runs onto your bulbs, which then obviously wire back to ground, thus a circuit. Now, this system works perfectly, providing everything's good, clean, you know, new. However, which one of my cars that are close to 50, 40s, 50s years old now? And well, things wear. So what ends up happening is this wire here runs into your fuse, and your fuse connector's got a little bit of dirt or you know corrosion built up on it. So this adds a bit of resistance to the wire. Not enough to notice, but, but a little bit of you know power is lost through the fuse. Then runs onto the switch. Same thing again. The contacts for the switch start wearing you lose a little bit more power and by the time it gets under the bulb you've got you know 9 volts instead of 12 and it's quite dim however this isn't the whole story so your headlights are a little bit dim it's a 1950s car you go bam headlights are rubbish anyway the other big problem especially what I noticed with the Civics is the corrosion on the fuse boxes also makes heat now, in the case of the Civics, it's very common to go down to find one on the side of the road or, you know, in a scrap or anything, and you look at the connector for the headlight fuse, and it's melted the plastic connectors for it. Because there's so much heat being generated from the resistance inside the fuse, that it's melted the plastic around it. Obviously, this is an everlasting loop of it getting hotter, making more corrosion, making more heat, and it circles until eventually it just, you know, melts the fuse completely out of the fuse box. I've seen it, it's not fun to fix. So, what's the solution for this? Well, it's quite simple really. Rather than using you know, the original fuse and the original switch to take all the power of the headlights, also keep in mind then have to run power from the battery into the car, run on the switch, back up the car, back down the wires, back to the headlights, you put a relay in place. My pen's run away panic over, it was in my pocket. Okay, so instead, if we do it, that we keep the fuse and keep the switch, but rather than running straight into the headlight, we go, I may not give us enough space here, into the coil side of a wheel. This here will then join back up to ground. I'm joined it up so it's simple to see the circuit. And the other side of this is where you have the relay switch, which I can actually draw sideways, it would, would help a lot. Um, so, that goes like that. This then runs it to its own fuse. Back to that trust. Yeah. I don't know how much like you heard, because it's fixed the wrong thing. But, so now if we do it, that the original circuit is still here. However, instead of the headlight being the load it's driving, it's now the coil of a relay, which takes a lot less power, which therefore means there's less power going through the original fuse and the original switches. It just doesn't create as much heat, because there's not enough power going through it. So in that case, this thing will trigger quite happily, 
and obviously be rounded up to the ground side again. And now we're running a new fuse. Everything should be fused in a car. Always people just running wires willy nilly and not fusing anything. I'm looking at the U disapprovingly. And this triggers your headlights. What this would normally happen is then you'll suddenly not have the losses through a normal switch or the old fuse box or any old wiring. And now suddenly you've got troubles at your headlights and a new brighter. So, compounded with this, if you then start running a lot higher powered lights than the original, the original steel beams being 55 watts and the new H4s being 60 watts, you start putting a lot of current. And to that, let's say it's got some spotlights on it, you're now up to probably double the factory power. So, a really much better idea than the original switch gear. Because the original switch gear, very hard to find. Relays, easy and cheap. So, that's the theory. Time to show you some practical example of this. Alright. Why are you so high? Come down a bit to a sit camera. Ah, oh, yes, look at it. Yeah, no comments on the Edward box. It's fine. Anyway, so here we join me on basically my bash side of my car. Um, anyone who's a Martin Civic, calls up here, like a reference of where we are. Cool. So, first of all, this lot down here is all the original harness that runs around and turns into the spaghetti over here because I pulled the tape back off of it. From in here, I pulled out the original headlight power wires. So, they're now running into my relays for the trigger side. What this allows is obviously when you turn the headlights on, the relays click and obviously energize the coil which pulls the contact over. So right now I've made my headlights, which usually light up the front of the car, into a device that clicks now. How handy. How off of that I've now got the new power wires that run from this actually run back into the original harness and run to the headlights as they would have done originally except now they've obviously got 12 volts from the battery comes around here through my apparently waterproof fuse box into the relays i say apparently waterproof because i can from here see corrosion already on top of it so i will have to be um replacing or rectifying the problem with the fuse box not end of the world things, just age. Have, like I said, this cheap fuse box and the relays are all relatively cheap and available. Whereas, say, if you have full fat, full. Have. As much as I'm complaining about obviously this not very waterproof fuse box and the relays, obviously they might fail or break, they're a lot easier to find and they're available on most store shelves, unlike the switch gear or the glass fuses even used in the car which nowadays are getting harder to find so me wearing out a fuse holder or wearing out one of those relays is a quick pop down to the local parts store and be like cool I'll have a relay please and it's I don't know a couple of dollars whereas trying to find an original switch gear or original fuse holder for a Martin Civic they're a little bit hard to find now so that's really Another reason to do this conversion is it extends the life expectancy of those things. Hello, it's now working again. You might notice two new relays. So, like I was saying, when you get lots of resistance, things start melting. Case in point, take a look at the bottom of these two bloody relays. Like I say, they've been sat right here for eight years of we run the car around, abuse and everything else. And well, they rusted. They're steel, they got some water on them, they started corroding. And this is my high beam relay, and I'm amazed it still worked. Like corrosion on it. However, the reason my dip beam wasn't working is because, well, it corroded so much that 
just made such a poor connection it actually melted the bottom of the relay out. So the relay still clicked, but I doubt there was anything going on inside that was actually connecting anything. To the point where I can shake it and I can feel it rattling. So I'm gonna guess that's dead. But like I said, two new relays, double reach, standard well what I'm gonna class as a Bosch relay. But to be honest, everyone makes them. They, these two are Triton ones. These are OEX ones, I think. But they're just a cheap, commonly available relay. So a pair of new ones of those, and ta-da, all works again. What I will point out, I don't know if it's still in here or not. Yeah, I think it's still on the floor somewhere. Normally have my stuff, that is. Come here, come here. Well, thing to watch out for. Some relays, look, oh. on the pins, exactly the same. However, check the warning diagrams, because occasionally you get relays that either have two outputs, both switched at the same time, or they have alternate outputs, in which case when you flick the switch over, it goes from one output to the other output. I hadn't noticed this when I first put the relay in, and I had a headlight stuck on, and I flicked the switch, or oh, a different headlight stuck on. Not overly useful. That's I want, you know, police siren style flashing lights on the front of my car. Could be a fun another project. So, a couple of new relays, Bob Trample, all working. So, there you have it. One simple and, well, easy modification due to your car that will extend the life of the older, hard to find parts. But I hope you've enjoyed this relatively short and hopefully informative video. Obviously if you have any questions regarding any of this, feel free to comment them below or get in contact with me somehow and just let me know because I'm more than happy to do more of the sort of how-tos and a bit more in-depth of some of the weird quirky stuff I've done with cars. And I guess I'll see you all in the next one. See you later.